what was their goals in murdering the civilians and were they pleased with the results? Um, crackdowns, concentration camps, I'd be interested in them, like learn more about those. And this is, these are compliments as well as just questions. Um, secret agreement to control South Korea. I'd like to know more about the secret agreement. Um, USA invades Korea, where was the USSR? US atrocities, there are likely very many more <laughs> that are not historically documented. Yep. Uh, common theme in US history. Um, details on why China is refused to, to the UN Security Council seat and the USSR boycott. Sounds like an interesting kind of um, connection that is relevant today when you look at the connection between uh, Russia and US, uh, Russia, China, and North Korea. That spiders, bees, ticks, and mosquitoes thing, that's super fascinating to me. I wrote wicked fascinating and in capital letters twisted. Uh, US plants smallpox and typhoid. Interested in learning more about that because that is uh, co another common theme in U.S. history and also um, worth investigating and, and, and learning more about. Um, what were the North Korean industries like their GDP, their exports, imports? Where's the proof of rapid industrial growth? Because the narrative that we hear in um, typically in the U.S. is not that. So I'd be interested in learning more about North Korean industries. Um, Turnkey factories. A turnkey factory is like when you mass produce one thing as opposed to like making custom buildings. Oh, that's nowhere near what the definition of the anyway. It's completely. I got it on you. No, no, I, I believe you, but that's like not what I found, so that's why I was like. Yeah, it's a turnkey factory. This would be a type of project that's constructed so that can be sold to any buyer as a completed project, in contrast to building to order where the constructor builds an item to the buyer's right. specifications. Um, so a turnkey factory is basically like a production line or uh, assembly line. Um, radical change in position of women, I just made a note that, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, it could be a great thing or a terrible thing. Yeah. Um, Washington doesn't care about nuclear capabilities in North Korea. I, getting this is a little connection to Dr. Strangelove here. Um, I bet they did <laughs> care about the nuclear abilities in North Korea. Um, USSR toppled by revisionism. Um, revisionism, Kind of by definition, doesn't. So this is everything you want him to. Uh, no, it's just food for thought. Oh, can you do it for any of us? Well, mine is a lot longer than yours, to be fair. I haven't seen you do that yet, but Carter Car Car has spent for. I mean, this class started at 805. Yeah. And you did, I gave you feedback. Yeah, but not as much. Like, you didn't take notes or anything. So my thought was that if I gave you notes, that you might not. Um, like, I, Carter's already, like, looking up, um, saying, I don't know, I'm sorry. No, you wanted, you wanted to take a part of the presentation? That's what I was just saying. I'm sorry. Right, you gotta do that for her. Okay. okay. All right, I'll come forward with that. Wait a minute. So now you want me to do that? No. Yeah, we're gonna invite you. Yeah, why don't you move? Yeah. We're gonna watch you move. Um, so, Carter, I'll just print this off and give it to you. I wanna answer some of your questions. Can you go back to the top of this? I can answer some of those right now. The, the top of the list of notes. Top now, I want to go back to the top of the list. I'll give you this, and if you want to maybe respond. Some of those points were answered directly, and some of them I directly, like, deliberately skipped over. Okay. Um, so I'll print this out, maybe if you send me that email. Okay. Just briefly, the classes in Korean society, because you asked, and I have the book right here. I was gonna, I brought this book to reference the classes in feudal Chinese society at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, analysis of the classes in Chinese society, society was written in March 1926. Uh, and now that's about the five classes in feudal Chinese society. But this is post-British colonialism, so actually they have a feudal society which is also a, um, a victim of colonialism by the British. And he says there's landlord class, middle bourgeoisie, petty bourgeoisie, semi proletariat and peasant proletariat. Yeah. Um, and essentially, this is a classification of neocolonialism. Uh, the difference between the kind of colonialism that happened in the 1700s on this continent and the difference with, and this, or Chinese colonialism, uh, is that in these places, in Korea, uh, both in today's colonial Korea and in Japanese colonial Korea, and in Chi uh, colonial China under British rule, and China after that and before that, all of those times that weren't, you know, the old sort of colonialism, there was always a class society. So it was always a ruling class benefiting from colonialism, and most of the population, the oppressed population, being hurt by colonialism. 
So that's part of the analysis of the classes in society. Um, Nate? Um, it's about your, like, what made you, like, uh, what made you, like, decide to go to was it like, was that more like advanced than like the Google Slides? What do you mean? Like, did you use like a, a completely different like software from No, Google? it's just Google Slides. Oh, because it looked different when you were loading it up, so I didn't know if that had like more like features. I had a black screen on the, uh, on the interface, but then I turned that off to. That's what completely, that's what the You said that um, there was classes established by Colonial and China. Mm, no. I was going to say, aren't there always classes everywhere? Well, the difference... I didn't even mean that as a criticism. I wanted to make a joke about class analysis in history. But I'm just happy about that because that's the point. When the Europeans invaded uh, Africa or the Americas or Asia hundreds and hundreds of years ago, right? they had primitive communism, mean, primitive communal society, where it was essentially a non-hierarchy of society. Uh, and it was the Europeans who came in and established classes. They uh, murdered the natives and established that society, gave them disease and uh, new technology that they didn't need in there. The difference... Hierarchy? What? Natives have a hierarchy. No. It's mostly respect to the elders. That doesn't mean there's no... Respect of elders is not the same thing as classes uh, in society. But the point is, in feudal Korea, at the beginning of the Korean Empire, feudal Japan at the beginning of the Korean Empire, and feudal China at this point as well, there's already a ruling class when the British get there. And so the ruling class in Korea, in Japan, and in China benefit from the colonialism, whereas in the United States, or what is now the United States, the Americas, Africa, and older Asia, everyone was essentially affected by colonialism. And that's the difference between neocolonialism and not neocolonialism. With the, um with the tribal thing, the tribal governments were extremely democratic because it's such a small group of people usually. So, like, I forget if it's, I think it was the people near Mississippi, but their tribe structure was one of, they had a common constitution that was written on, like, scroll and passed down through generations. But um, basically, they would just discuss until an agreement was reached rather than, like, voting per se. Sure, I had a question <coughs> just about some phrasing they used, and yes. I, was, I was curious about, you said the USSR was toppled by revisionism? Yes, and you were coming up to that point, so continue that whole thing. Well, my, so revisionism, as far as I understand it, is looking back and revising the narrative or revising the story. Well, in the, okay, go on. So, how could revisionism play an active role in society? How could the USSR have been toppled by revisionism? Essentially, that word revisionism has a colloquial meaning and a meaning within communism. The way I interpreted it was the USSR was not toppled, but rather we say it was through revisionist history. Like how, oh, no, that's a very different use of like it. Like, it's like future me screwing me today. You know what I mean? Like how could the future impact it today? In, from uh, 1917 to 21 or 24 uh, was Lenin's first provisional government in the USSR, right? Uh, and then after that, in the late 20s or early 30s, I forget which, Stalin was elected for the first time to the uh, Central Committee of the USSR. And then he's elected again four times, and they won't let him leave the uh, Central Committee. And then he dies in 1953, or he's murdered, whichever one you like, uh, of a heart attack. Uh, and at that point, then, because Stalin has failed to eliminate ideological deviations from communism in the USSR's uh, Central Committee, the person elected after him, elected, is Khrushchev. Now, it may have been corrupt, but Khrushchev is someone who turns all of the Stalin era uh, effective industrialization policies that give uh, women's rights huge advances, you know, indus uh, industrial rights huge advances, um, rights for colonial, uh, the uh, colonized people, of the USSR, who were previously colonized, huge advances. All these advances of the Stalin era were overturned by uh, Khrushchev, who was just a unfortunate effect of Stalin not being uh, harsh enough in eliminating the ideological deviations of the party. So essentially what happens is Khrushchev's revisionism turns into the revisions of the, of the next guy. And because they don't fight it, the USSR oh, okay. is allowed so to. 
I'll just sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually. Like, all right, I guess There's a lot right. to elect more revisionists eventually culminating in Gorbachev, <laughs> who is very it's, fascist I and very American. It's, uh, right back right. I'm going to start the movie pretty soon. It's not yeah. revisionism as in changing what you think of history, it's revisionism as in straying from the core ideology. I hear you. Yeah. That, that makes sense now. So I, I could have summarized it like that, but I wanted to. This is a point of clarification. Um, and then also, just a word, just a word about Stalin preaching decolonization and independence. Um, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about the Monroe Doctrine. Are you guys familiar with the Monroe Doctrine? No, could you explain what the Monroe Doctrine was? That's when the USA said, like, stop colonizing America. Yeah, it's not, not simply stop colonizing America. Stop coming to the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. Like, stay away. And now there's, I don't understand how this can continue to like, gravity continues to like, I don't get that, because the tax haven't moved. Um, but anyways. Did you uh, have to flatten it out and then tax it? I know, but I did that back in September. Anyways, that's another story for another day. But there, there was a reason why the U.S. said, leave these poor colonized countries alone. Leave them alone. They don't deserve to be colonized. We were colonies once, and we fought a revolution to get rid of it. Colonization is bad. Um, so we think, you know, the Monroe doctrine, the doctrine, it up, yeah. and um, now we have banana republics, you know, and, you know, basically U.S. supported the uh, cartels that close to it in Latin America, in South America. So by America. saying do not colonize these places because they deserve independence, we were essentially saying this is a, yeah, this is will happen. Like, stay out. You guys, you guys, we, you can't, you can't beat us at, at our own game. I didn't even come here to argue this point. Okay. So I don't have materials prepared oh, to okay. argue this point. Yeah. It was just a. So I can only give you a brief understanding of the argument which I will make. Yeah. His point is that communism, as it is intended to be a classless society, a classless union of workers among the world, and not the ruling class, knows that in order to unify the people of the world and under one economic system of communism, uh, it can only happen through mutual confidence and mm -hmm. voluntary agreement. He knows that there can't be pressure under this move towards a classless and free system, which is uh, intended to be classless communism. And he says the road to the formation of a voluntary union of peoples lies in the separation of colonies from the integral imperialist whole. In other words, you must disconnect the uh, ruled countries and places and peoples from their ruling imperialist classes, uh, uh, countries and classes, through the transformation of colonies into independent states. So in other words, he's saying to, first of all, disconnect the colonies from their uh, colonizers, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, to allow for a self-determination of colonized people. And you say, how can this happen? The USSR wants to colonize the whole entire world. But again, this, you said, well, you said over there. I said uh, the US wanted to colonize the Caribbean and Latin American countries, which was. You said, no, you said, you know, the, the USSR is coming over here and colonizing the West. No, 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 no. That was all of Europe, you know, France and, and England. Yeah. That's what the US. He just never of. said that. He was saying that the US basically claimed all of, a, all of the Western Hemisphere as its own with the Monroe Doctrine. Okay, it, I, I misheard him, I guess, but the point yeah. is still saying so. The point is not that the USSR was colonizing um, the Eastern Bloc or uh, the rest of Europe or Africa or Latin America. The point is that the USSR gave them the ability to, di to disconnect from their colonial powers. Um, they disconnected Japan from Korea, for example, and gave the Korean people the freedom to continue their revolution to the end. But they didn't force the Korean people to have a revolution. It was the Korean people, the Korean workers, the, not the Korean ruling class, who wanted that revolution and who gave way to a liberated Korea. But it wasn't Sorry, the U.S. Is that between how the U.S. has sort of monopolized certain movements in other countries also? Absolutely, yeah. But the reason the USSR does this is for the liberation of these colonial peoples against their colonizers. Well, I would, I would posit that that is the American excuse for intervention in many rebellions. But the difference is that what actually happens when the, US, when the USA and other you know, Western countries go and say they're freeing people is that they go and create more colonialism. On the other hand, when the USSR goes to these places and 
tells them that they can have a revolution. It doesn't export revolution. Revolution can't be exported. But when it goes and says, look what we've done in the USSR, you can do that here too. Just get rid of your, you know, your ruling class. Then they don't establish a new form of communist colonialism. What they do is allow the people to have their own revolution and establish their own state. That's why uh, Korean communism doesn't look like USSR communism, it doesn't look like Chinese communism, and it doesn't look like Cuban communism well, today. Communism is an ideal. So right, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't look the same. It depends on the people and population. Yeah. Yeah. But if, you, like if it was... If it was... Like, was no, very different Sorry, I'll stop. No, yeah. we, have to, we gotta move forward. Um, yeah. uh, yeah. But if it was the USSR expanding, yeah. then okay. Cuba would look like the USSR, would look like China, would look like Korea, would look like Vietnam. It doesn't work that way. It's the people that choose to have a revolution. The USSR gives them the choice, gives them you know, the possibility they see in the USSR it can happen. But it's not that they're forced to. It's not that the USSR goes there for a motive which is profit. It goes there for the motive of liberating the people and not having any more colonialism. I'm done. OK. Um, so what I will say is that what was happening at this time in the United States scared the crap out of the population but not as much as you might think. Um, that's kind of cool. What is this? That's audacity. That's audacity. How dare you? I, I wanted to record my whole presentation, but I forgot. Wait, are you recording this right now? Yeah. Oh my god. At least <laughs> the last 10 minutes. <laughs>